in just a minute, and then we'll have the bells of the church, and then our opening hymn, 475, God himself is with us. So God's grace be with you all. Good morning.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us attend to Holy Scripture. A reading from Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their hosts and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, and not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Let us read the psalm responsibly by verse. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. Though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law. So that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Our gradual hymn is hymn 429. I'll praise my maker while I have breath.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Maybe sometimes you feel like grasshoppers. Maybe it's the other students at the school who mock you, or perhaps the loneliness or even advancing age that makes you feel like grasshoppers. We may feel like grasshoppers when we trudge into our workplace or try to raise a difficult child, or perhaps reports from our investment or pension funds make us feel like grasshoppers. Sooner or later, we all feel like grasshoppers especially when we compare ourselves to the Lord of heaven and earth, God, the creator of everything that is made. In fact, when we compare anything God made to its creator, even the greatest things are tiny, things like mighty mountains, immense galaxies, and awesome oceans, still tiny. Grasshoppers, people, ourselves, our hopes and dreams and struggles, tiny, too tiny, too small to be noticed by the God who made the heavens, the stars in their courses, and set a boundary to the seas. Israel thought that God did not see their predicament and disregarded them, but Isaiah assures them and us that this is not so. God does not dwell aloof and remote above our little world. The word of Isaiah is that the God who holds the oceans in his hands and measures the heavens with the span of his hand is merciful to us lowly human beings. 
Isaiah doesn't say that God gives power to the people who are always successful to make them more successful. Isaiah doesn't say that God gives more toughness to those who are already tough. No, what Isaiah says is that the God of majesty and power is so merciful, he gives his strength to men and women who say, I cannot make it any longer. I'm tired. I am ready to give up and give in. The weak and weary person will receive God's strength and power, not those who say, I'll grit my teeth and clench my fists and pull myself up by my own bootstraps. God's mercy is for the messed up, not for those who already believe that they are mighty. And Isaiah assumes, I suppose foolishly, that God's people always understood that and don't forget that. Yet sometimes things happen that challenge the assumption that nothing and no one compares to the Lord. To most of Israel's contemporaries, after all, her Babylonian exile meant that Babylon's God was stronger than Israel's God. To them, Jerusalem and Israel's destruction meant that Babylon's gods had somehow defeated their God. Sometimes people and things also challenge our assumptions about God's greatness, God's mercy, God's willingness or even capacity to see us. We may wonder, for example, if advancing cancer or old age is mightier than God. Economic crises or pandemic disease may feel stronger than God. Perhaps our own fears or doubts or worries have replaced God in our lives. In fact, the things that make us wonder if God is really so great may even lead us to say with Israel, as we heard in verse 27, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Sometimes struggles, after all, lead even God's people to wonder if God can even see or care about what's bothering us. Does God even care, we ask, if I'm afraid or confused? Does God even see that my life sometimes feels like just one long walk on a treadmill to nowhere? Doesn't God see the injustice that sometimes seems to flourish in our world, in our communities, sometimes in our own lives? How tired we are. Matthew Henry, Matthew Henry, an English author of the early 1700s who wrote an exhaustive commentary on the entire Bible, he is quick to say. Someone I actually still refer to wrote this after he had finished, put down his pen and said, I have never been weary of the work, but I have often been weary in it. There are some of us who get weary of God's work, of God's work, and some of us who get weary in God's work. And whatever the case may be, Isaiah reminds us that the God of all majesty and power is also the God of all mercy. And those who wait upon the Lord, even if you are bruised, beat down, or burnt out, shall renew their strength. For those to whom Isaiah was writing, this good news would have been difficult to process. It comes in the wake of the Babylonian exile, perhaps 
around the end of the exile, these writings that we read this morning, around the 530s BC. And it may be that different Judeans had experienced their exiles differently. We've dug deep into the history of that time and are pretty sure that various groups in various places had different experiences entirely of their captivity. Some, like those who were with the former king, Jehoiachin, in Babylon itself, and we have a record of this, seem to have received rations from the royal court and may have eventually been treated reasonably well. Others, however, may have been located in what were essentially labor camps. Even in the best case, the homecoming and restoration in Judah would have been a very difficult matter. After 50 or more years in exile, most of those returning would have hardly known the place. Exile was hard, but returning was difficult too. They were all in the same storm, as I put it last week, but some were in different boats. But for all of them, exile was hard. But returning is difficult too. Isaiah confirms what we already know, that even the strongest among us will fail, fall down due to life's struggles. Isaiah writes, even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. If someone says, I can make it on my own, Isaiah says, there is a time when we all will fall and need divine mercy to pick us up. Some folks may think they're tough enough to make it on their own, but Isaiah declares there will come a time when we will hit a wall and burn out physically, financially, or emotionally. There will come a time when we are going to faint and be weary. Even the choice young men will faint and grow weary. There's, there are scores of people who at the highest point of opportunity just can't get it together. In athletics, entertainment, or academics, there are choice young people who just can't get it together or won't get it together because of varieties of weariness. It can happen to anybody, anywhere, at any time. But Isaiah preaches good news. Even when choice young people grow weary, God makes a mercy-filled promise. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I hope by now you've perceived that so much of what I'm saying is coming from a, a heart of a concern for our parish, for our communities, for each of you and your own journeys through these last difficult months. And I find in this passage and in Isaiah's comfortable words, promises for us to hold fast. I continue, one might perceive in the comforts of the final verses Isaiah shares with the exiles a special message for those for whom the long journey home would be hardest, the elderly among them, not only for their age, but for those who remembered Judah as she was in former days. 
the writer contrasts between those who rely on the Lord, who will run and not be weary, walk and not faint, with boys and men in their youthful prime who will faint and fall exhausted. This message would not have been much help to young men, but perhaps it was not aimed primarily at them. The memories of the elderly were not merely nostalgia. They would have been useful to the returnees. As difficult as life in Mesopotamia would have been, as different as it was, remembering how and where things had been done in Judah would have been a significant contribution. Remembering how and where things had been done in Judah would have been critical for their new life. The cadence of the passages even, they shall renew, they shall rise, they shall run, they shall walk, seems written to carry the elders along. From Genesis to Revelation, the biblical witness is that from age to age, God hears the cries of his people and empowers them in exhaustion, in oppression, and in other moments of greatest need. God not only protects the people with his wings, he bestows upon them wings of their own. Most of us naturally want to do something to fix whatever's wrong with our world, those we love and ourselves. You and I, however, cannot fix some of the things that make us most weary and weak. And while we may be able to temporarily revive our energy, only God can give strength that lasts to those who hope in the Lord. I think Americans fall into a trap when we assume that if we just elect enough politicians that share our views, moral problems will suddenly shrink and vanish. Isaiah, however, reminds us that Almighty God not only raises up such leaders in their time, but also topples them like fragile houses of cards. God reduces even the mightiest and the most charismatic leaders to nothing. Isaiah, after all, reminds us that compared to God, even our most talented leaders are like dry dandelion seeds that even a mild windstorm can scatter. As a result, God's adopted sons and daughters Learn to wait for God to work in our lives and the world. Yet we don't wait with legs crossed and hands in our pockets. Christians wait on tiptoes, as it were, fully expecting God to both revive us and perhaps to help us revive our world and its people. After all, Isaiah insists that God won't just sooner or later increase the power of the weak. No, as surely as God created the ends of the earth, God shall increase the power of the weak. For weak would seem to be a good description of Isaiah's Israel that is in exile. And it might feel like a apt description of yourself or your observation of this congregation. We know what it means to be weak, to be in exile, to be separated. After all, even children and young adults, as the prophet reminds us, sometimes grow tired and weary. Even the strongest eventually stumble and fall. All of us desperately need God's help. The Hebrew rendering of Isaiah's promise is God will let us exchange our strength 
for his. They can exchange their strength, Isaiah says. God gives strength without his strength being diminished. God gives power without his power being lessened. If you wait upon the Lord, God will replace your weakness with his strength. Exchange your emptiness for his wholeness. Exchange your burnout with his new beginning. And we'll walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. You will fly again. Some say I'm not a flyer. I'm a runner. Well, if that's the case, Isaiah says you will run and not grow weary. And some say I cannot run another step. So Isaiah says, they that wait upon the Lord shall walk and not grow faint. <laughs> this good news will not let us off the hook. It will not let us go. We cannot be separated from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. God in mercy, give us the grace to fly or to run or to walk as you will towards you, the haven and home and source of our lives. Amen. Amen. Let us rehearse our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten not made of one being with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the holy spirit he became incarnate from the virgin mary and was made man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us pray to God who came among us in the birth of Jesus, that we may find peace, joy, and contentment in this epiphany season. Let us pray for ourselves and for all those in need of our prayers saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church of Christ, that it may faithfully proclaim the good news of salvation and may care for the needs of God's people in all corners of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our troubled world and the darkness of war and injustice may be replaced by the light of peace and love. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in need of our prayers, the homeless, the unemployed, the hungry, those who are hospitalized, those who are imprisoned in body or soul, and all those for whom this season is not one of joy, but of trial and sadness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for all those listed on our parish prayer list, David Moore, foster son of Luann Driver, William Shanahan, Peter Noel, cousin of Mary Ann Shanahan, Julie Hauser, Chris Seiler, Susan Vanderberg, Cecilia Walker, Bob Walker, Mary Margaret Sneed, John McPhee, Dave Beiser, Marta Edwards, Bill Radcliffe, Linda Treadway, Anita Saul, Annie Willis, Rod Reinecke, Phil Barber, Daryl Smith, Carolyn Tillman, Debbie Vikes, Jan Scott, Linda Carter, Izzy Martin, Dean Daly, and Aubrey Henderson, that their illnesses may be turned into health and their sorrow into rejoicing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who labor on behalf of others, doctors and nurses, those serving in the armed forces, police officers and firefighters, bus and taxi drivers, and all those whose work prevents them from sharing this time with those they love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community of God gathered in this place that we may always hear the good news of God's living presence in our world. Towards deepening of faith, and living that faith in love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us in faith, Jane Seller Scott, David Stewart, brother of Bob Stewart, and Blaine Alvis, age 16, that as we remember them in love, we like them may remain faithful to the end and live forever in the light of your eternal glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, may the light and hope of your Son's incarnation reassure our hearts that you are among us, that you hear our prayer, and that you will be with us always, even to the end of the age. In the name of Jesus of Bethlehem, we pray. Amen. Let us now make a humble confession of our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, bring you to everlasting life. Amen. And now unmuted, let us greet one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So with you. God's peace. God's peace. 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 peace be with you. Nice reading, Meredith. Peace to the Lord. Thank you.
Nice flowers, Meredith. Oh, flowers. Yes. Everyone. Yes. Beautiful flowers. <laughs> yeah. The flower guild is awesome. <laughs> I think they How do nice. Too. Those are beautiful. Yes, beautiful. Yep. Very nice. Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace be with you. Man. Peace be with you all. Mm -hmm. And also with you. Yeah, thank you. Good to hear your voice, Bob. Slowing down because everyone's unmuted. Mm -hmm. Peace, Greg. I like your beard. <laughs> You're right. Thanks. Of course, the beard. <laughs> thank you. Oh. And now, if you are bringing your gift to the altar, and remember that your sister or brother has something against you, leave your gift and go and be reconciled to your sister or brother, and then come and offer your gift. Our worship this morning continues with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic prayer B. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
give thanks to you, O God, in the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body of your Son and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Athanasius and Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. Amen. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. are the gifts of God for you, who are also gifts of God.
Please join me now in a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. My friends, we do not have long to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So let us be quick to be kind and swift to love. And may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Please remain online after our closing hymn that we might have some conversation. Our closing hymn is 379. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead and go ahead and unmute yourselves. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Bob Walker. Good to see you. Thank you. It's good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's always good to see Bob. <laughs> a little bit at a time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, thank you for that concern. I appreciate it. 